everybody. Welcome to Weddings Done Right Radio, the how-to for the I do. I am Jody Harris, CEO of Fun at Sight and Sound Events, where I am broadcasting from the wedding capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, Nevada, and at Sight and Sound Events World Headquarters. Let me give you a little information about me before we get started with this awesome show. I own Sight and Sound Events with my husband, Pat. I've been in the wedding industry since the early 90s. I am an entertainment producer, director, coordinator, and disc jockey MC. During my career, I have successfully produced many a wedding, so many weddings that I'm not even going to tell you guys how many. That's how many I've done. This radio show podcast came about because there's so much information out there and really not too many alternatives to get good, solid advice from experts in the industry. So through the power of the internet, you can download favorite episodes of this show, Weddings Done Right, the how-to for the I do, and listen in your car and share that with friends and family. So like I said, it is the how-to for the I do. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, and I would love to hear from you, please send me a tweet. Tweet it out to Jody Harris. That's J-O-D-I Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. So are you guys ready? We're going to start the very first show of Weddings Done Right. So let's get started. According to USA Today, December, with its holiday cheer, romantic winter backdrops, and family gatherings, is amongst the most busiest month for popping the question, followed by Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, and New Year's. Think about that. So now that you've got the bling, where do you go and start planning for your wedding? Bridal shows can be a great one-stop shopping experience for getting information on a variety of wedding vendors, but they can also be crowded, confusing, overwhelming. So here to give us some tips on bridal shows is the industry's most respected bridal show producer in the country. I'm excited to introduce to you Debbie Hansen. Deborah Hansen is the president of Bridal Spectacular, and she is producing her 44th bridal show here in Las Vegas. Debbie, hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, so excited to be here. It's really I'm, great. I'm so excited to have you here. Tell us a little bit about you and your background being a bridal show producer. Well, it goes really far back. Um, actually, over 45 years, I've been around the bridal show industry. I worked for my mother and my aunt at a bridal shop when I was 14. So uh, I have a lot of background in it. I had a flower shop for 12 years. My husband was a DJ for 20 years. So I've just been around it forever. And in 1991, we produced our first bridal show, The Bridal Spectacular. And it's just a great way because the brides can find everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And tell me a little bit. I know that uh, there's an association like a lot of different things. There are different associations. BSPI stands for? Bridal Show Producers International. A great organization of all the most professional bridal shows across the country, Canada, and actually all over the world. Wow. And do you see a difference? I mean, you know, you're a member of BSPI. Is there a difference between for the brides attending a a, a BSPI? PI produced a show, produced show rather than just somebody on the street kind of show? I think there certainly can be in most cases. I'm certainly not going to say there are some people out there producing great shows that are not members of BSPI, but we do hold to a certain standard and we are held accountable. If we don't follow that standard, we can lose our uh, standing and membership in BSPI. So yeah, uh, you know, if you're going to a BSPI show, it's going to be a quality show. Wow. Very cool. Well, so let me, so let me, let's start. So somebody gets engaged for Christmas. We also just came off of Valentine's Day. Yeah. And did you know that Valentine's Day, they're actually saying, has matched Christmas now for being the most engaged this year? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Go yeah. see. Updated news. Yep. That's awesome. Well, good. Yeah, I could I could totally see that. So these girls get engaged Valentine's Day and Christmas. What do they do first? I mean, what, what do you, I mean, a bridal show, I would imagine, is the it's, first place to go. It is the best place to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, there's so many details they're going to have to deal with and get frustrated over and everything. When you go to a bridal show, you're going to be able to collect all of that all at one time. So it definitely, that's a good place to start with your planning, collect lots of information, organize it, and, you know, go on from there. Meet the professionals. Awesome. So where do they, how do they find a bridal show? These days, I would say Google. You know, okay. good old Google. <laughs> good old and Google. of course, up are going to come many bridal shows in your in your area. And then from there, research, ask your friends which bridal shows they've been to, which ones they liked. And, uh, you know, go from that. Awesome. Awesome. So is there a difference? I mean, I hear these like open houses and bridal shows and private showcases. 
Is there a different? Is there a difference in that? Definitely. Uh, one thing I talk about in, in my magazine, mm-hmm. Spectacular Bride, is that an open house is a place you go look at a venue. Mm-hmm. And usually that venue will have maybe 20 of their preferred vendors there. Mm-hmm. So that's a great experience because it gives you a chance to see the venue. Right. But it's not a bridal show because at a bridal show, you're going to have 180 vendors. Uh, you're going to see fashion shows. You're going to have a chance to win prizes. Just, you know, have a really good time planning your wedding. So it's a little totally a different thing than the open houses. Then you've got your large convention center bridal shows, and then you have your hotel bridal shows, which are more your boutique bridal shows. So at a large bridal show, you can expect maybe 100, 150, 180 vendors. Uh, At a boutique bridal show, you're going to be 50 to 80 vendors. So as long as you know what your expectations are, you won't be disappointed when you go into a show. Just know that there are, you know, subtle differences between them. And with bridal shows, I mean, is there a cost to attend a bridal show? A good bridal show? Yes, there usually is. And, you know. and why would there, you, you mentioned a good bridal show, like you're talking about a cost. So why are some free and ones aren't free? What, what Usually one that's charging, of course, has many more things that they're going to give you when you come to the door, whether it's a magazine subscription, a free wedding planner, uh, coupon packages, just different things, uh, a free shopping keepsake bag you're going to use forever throughout your whole planning. There's lots of different things, a wedding planner, different, different things that you'll get when you come to a quality show where you're actually paying for a ticket versus a free show. They're not going to have the same uh, benefits and factors that they can put into it to create the show for you that you're going to really want to go to. And that would make sense because the bridal show that's charging is is giving you more, maybe a little bit more value. Right. You're, right. you're getting to take away a lot more stuff than, say, having an open house at, like, a sight and sound event. Right. You know, right. so that, that totally makes sense. Is there a bridal show season? Like, what if a girl gets engaged in July? Is there a bridal show season? I noticed a lot of them are happening now, you know, early in the year. But is there a season? There's probably the the primary season, which is now. Most of the shows happen January, February, or March. But then there is also that secondary season because we know we don't want to leave anybody out. So there's the girl who does get engaged in July. She didn't get engaged for Christmas or Valentine's. She still needs to have a show to go to. So then you're going to have a series of shows that are usually going to be August, September, October, and even November. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And so... So you find a bridal show, you you find it online. Let's say I live in Las Vegas and I find your bridal show online. Do you recommend, like, what's the next step? Do I pre-register? Absolutely pre-register. If you don't want to stand in long lines when you get to the door, if you're already pre-registered and in the case where they're selling tickets, go ahead and purchase your tickets online. So that when you get to the door, you're ready to go in, grab your shopping bag and start shopping right away without having to fill out more forms when you get there. And and what are these girls? So they, so they come to the bridal show, they pre-register, they walk in the door, and they just go kind of kind of describe the experience. They just go, because there's girls listening to the show. So do they just walk to the different booths, meet the vendors? Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to have, depending on the size of the show, you want to walk around and you want to meet everybody. Now, in our particular show, we start with some trends. They're going to walk through an area where they can see the current you know, decor trends, uh, flower trends, dress trends, those sort of things. So they can start seeing, oh, wow, I like that dress or I like that color. And they're going to have a little bit of an experience doing that. Then they start through the rest of the show meeting vendor after vendor, uh, collecting the information so that they can know who they want to purchase their wedding and products and services from. Awesome. Do you find, like when you were talking about the trends, is it you and your staff that come up with, like, or do you hire coordinators to come in and come up with the trends? Like, are you guys, I'm sure you guys are on the cutting edge of the trends, but how do you know what to showcase at a bridal show when it comes to that? We do try to stay, of course, on top of the current wedding trends, but we feel like that's something that the experts should do. So we have many quality florists, and I'm sure shows across the country have many quality florists and decor people who come in and they know, you know, the different uh, trends and flowers and, and decor and lighting and all the things that a bride could possibly want at a wedding. So they put together those those themes and decorate the booth so that the bride is seeing as she walks through the hall many different ideas and concepts, cutting edge that's trends. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Is there, you know, I'm kind of getting off topic here and I do that a lot, but is there, is it, if you saw, at your last show, was there anything uh, particular that stood out that was really kind of cool and different? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's always hard to pin down just one. You know, we, we, we honor and award as many booths as we can because they're also spectacular. Uh, just the colors, you know, the colors, the, the soft pinks, the, the new new big color emerald, uh, just knowing how to put those together and, and beautiful uh, crystals and things hanging on filament, you know, from the sky. It's very hard to describe on radio. Right, right. Uh, but just amazing trends that maybe a bride would never think of on her own, but as she walks through, she can meet the florist that can put these things together for her. That's awesome. And the other 
other thing that she can do is touch taste yes. feel smell smell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can incorporate all five senses right. by going to a show because right. there's only so much like a magazine you know can can do right. you know you can only exactly get a visual exactly so. and and with so many of the products a bride needs uh djs mm -hmm. uh photographers personality is such a major part of that decision Picking them from the website, picking them from a magazine, you can't even have a clue what their personality is. Sure. And matching your personalities with your DJ, with your photographer is, is key, absolutely key, as you know. Mm -hmm. So um, they want to meet those people and they want to find out, is this something I'd be comfortable with on my wedding day? Absolutely. How much time should a bride spend, plan on spending at a bridal show? We always tell them plan on at least four hours. What? At least four hours, and that will give them plenty of time to, to walk through a large show and see a fashion show, because usually a fashion show is going to be 35, 45 minutes right there. That's awesome. So I always tell them, plan on at least four hours. Fashion show, and, and, and roughly fashion show, we, we go over things like tuxedos and gowns and... Bridesmaids, flower girl dresses, mother of the bride, everything that they're going to need apparel-wise for their wedding to see the veil styles. And, of course, we have flowers, too, in the, in the fashion shows, or many people do. And that's just kind of gives you the whole picture. Wow, that's awesome. That's, that's very, very cool. Um, so spending about four hours, so plan on spending four hours. And just now for the brides that are listening, I mean, you talked a little bit about like the personality and meeting the vendors. You know, the vendors are also there, you know, trying to meet as many brides as possible. Right. So if, if a bride doesn't get an opportunity to spend too much with a vendor, your recommendation would probably be set up an appointment with that. I would say that's the most important thing to do at a bridal show. Uh, collect the information so that you can look at it later, but definitely make an appointment with the ones that, you know, attract your eye or your ear or whatever, your taste buds, whatever it is you're, you're checking out and say, you know, can I make an appointment with you? Uh, definitely. And then proceed with that so that you find out more about that person. Got it. So you go to, you're the bride, you got engaged, you go to the bridal show, you, you pretty much, you know, you're going to spend, invest about four hours. That's what you should do, girls. If you're listening in the car, four hours, who do you bring with you to the bridal show? Well, bring the groom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More grooms are getting involved now than ever. I mean, they really do get excited about it now. So if you've got a groom like that who really wants to be involved, definitely bring him along. Uh, our particular show, we have a date night and the grooms come and that's really great. And then we have a second day show. Not all shows have a two day show, but uh. the second day, then we say, we'll come back without them because not all guys can put in that commitment to shopping ladies. <laughs> so if you find that he's not really able to stick it out, you know, bring him for a couple hours, send him on and then continue shopping yourself because we know women can shop. Awesome. So with the girls spending about four hours, what about the mom? I mean, do the moms come too? Do they, they do. usually do, do you see moms? A lot? Moms are definitely very much involved. Anybody, would you, so anybody who may be paying for the wedding should probably come to a bridal show, maybe? Yeah, dads, you know, attention span aren't always good, but I have had dads come and, yeah, and enjoy I've it. I've seen them, yeah. But I think collecting that information and then sitting down at another time with your parents, if the parents are paying and going through all those details can also be good. Sometimes what will happen to the bridal show if you bring too many people is you'll get pulled too many different directions. Got it. And then that's more what becomes overwhelming than the show itself. Absolutely. I, I definitely have to agree with you on that one for sure, because you know, you're bringing the friends, the bridesmaids are all coming and they're like, you should talk to that DJ. Oh no, no, no. But I like that DJ, <laughs> but wait, that photographer does this, but no, I found it. And you're like, exactly. so I, 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 I totally agree with you. It's it could become very overwhelming, and I think you know you're a hundred percent right. I really do honestly feel it should be the bride and groom. They're the ones that are getting married. Right, right. They should be enjoying the experience, and that's what's cool about a bridal show is is girls that you get to experience. I mean, that's part of it. Shopping, shopping for your big day, shopping and tasting cake and holding different bouquets and talking to some of the industry experts. It's so, so vitally important, right. like you, all points that you touched on. So and they're getting to do that without having to get go in their car and drive 30 or 40 places all over town. Absolutely. Yeah. They get to see all these people under one roof. Absolutely. So spending four hours there was about to say spending four hours there you should pretty much dress comfortably oh definitely so you're not wearing um, the stilettos right? definitely uh <laughs> don't no. no the most important thing is to wear the comfortable shoes uh -huh. yeah but yeah and if you want to be respected too though it's it, it's important to dress nicely you good know. point i never nicely. even i never even thought about that so when you say if you're a bride attending the bridal show when you say dress nicely i mean you're not talking about you know pearls and you know no. you're just talking about clean neat right. nice right. don't look too sloppy yeah 
because yeah. people form opinions, right? They I mean, do, unfortunately. They do. Is. Of course, I always tell my vendors don't because you can't tell, you know, the quality of a person just by the way they're dressed. But uh, I think some people do judge that way. Yeah. No, I agree. I th- very, very good point. I didn't even think about that. But that see, girls, very, very good. Um, setting up an email account, a specific email account. I've been reading a lot that brides should do that. Why should they set up a specific email just for their wedding? Well, one reason would be that when the wedding's all over, you can simply then turn that email off so that you're no longer hearing from vendors that you don't need to hear from anymore. Um, I always tell brides they really shouldn't stress too much about the fact that they're going to get emails from these vendors after a bridal show, Mm -hmm. because that's what it's all about. You went there to collect information. You went there hopefully even find some special offers and great deals. And many of these vendors are going to continue to send these offers after a show. So there's no reason to get all worried about the fact that people are emailing your email address, and you'll be especially less worried about it if you just use a different one to begin with. Mm -hmm. Our particular show and many shows are coming to where they actually change the bride's email anyway for them so that we're not giving out their private email addresses. So when you say change the email, explain that to me. Well, in other words, if their email is Jane Doe, you know, at Yahoo, we're not actually going to give Jane Doe at Yahoo out to the vendors. Okay. So we're already protecting their, their privacy. Got it. Okay. But not all shows are doing that yet. So uh, in case that's not being done, I just recommend set up a new Yahoo account, new Gmail account, whatever, you know, just mm-hmm. so that you can, when you're done planning, you can just turn it off. Awesome. And you don't get a bunch of emails anymore that you're not interested in looking at. Perfect. Great advice. And what about, I noticed that a lot of vendors will do giveaways at their booth. Um, They might give away, you know, um, a a light, maybe a lighting package Mm -hmm. or something like that. Or a florist may give away a a toss bouquet, let's say. Um, So... When these girls come to the shows, the vendors, as a vendor, I know that, you know, we, we ask for the information ahead of time well, you know, or ask them to fill out a card. Do you recommend that they come? I noticed a lot of girls are using stickers oh, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely bring, uh, bring labels with your name, address, and wedding date and email on it. Uh, and then you'll be able to use those for all the different drawings of the different booths. Good and you advice. won't have to keep handwriting until you get, you know, writer's cramp. Yeah. You know, writing those things out. But it is a great opportunity to win prizes. So you want to be prepared to, you know, have that little sticker and, and give that information to each vendor so for a chance to win prizes and discounts and sometimes free services. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's a good thing. And I like that because you're right. I mean, you just keep writing and writing. And sometimes you're at a point and you're a vendor. You're at a point where the girl <laughs> didn't bring the sticker. And you're at a point where, like, is that, what's that? Is that a zero? Is that an O? Is like, cause the handwriting is yes, just, very yeah. Hard. And very you hard. might win something. You, maybe you want a honeymoon or something like that. So you never know. You, you never ne- know. You never know. Um, is it important for a bride? I mean, I know she's spending, we talked about the four hours. Is it important that she visit every vendor at the show? It depends on what things she still needs. Uh, we have, we find 60 to 75% of the brides who come to shows haven't done anything yet. So, yeah, it, there's nothing wrong with, as you walk by each booth, picking up a piece of information so that you can go home. And, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, what yeah. to do when you do get home. Uh, but, yeah, pick up information from every booth to organize later. Um, if you are n- already started with your wedding planning and you're specifically looking for particular mm-hmm. categories, photography, DJs, flowers, whatever the category is, then you're going to want to focus on those categories. So, yeah, you can eyeball, I don't need flowers, oh, that's a florist, keep going. Right, sure. You know, But be astute about it because sometimes... Somebody will put a lot of flowers in their booth as decor, and they're not a florist at all. So make sure you're, you're figuring out what exactly that vendor is doing. If it's something you need, definitely collect the information. But don't just collect the information. Take time to talk to them. I agree. Find, I, out, find out what they're all about and what they can offer you. I agree. I think that you'll learn more about that person and what they can do. Right. And you, you, you might see somebody who maybe advertises them, some, some, themselves as like a DJ company, but also offers video and didn't even like, you know, exactly. barely touches on it, may have a little screen and you're like, oh, it's a DJ. I don't need them. And I could just keep walking. So no, that's, that's great advice. That's great advice. Um, should a bride bring her calendar or schedule? Uh, her um, day planner to yeah if she's going to make appointments definitely and that's the goal Mm -hmm. I mean that's what I hear right from all of the bridal show producers including yourself that I you know follow that you you, the main thing is for the girls you want them to make appointments with the vendors right exactly find out as much as you can there in your your short conversation most people are going to talk to you three to five minutes each Um, have that conversation with them figure out if it's somebody you feel comfortable with want to make an appointment with and, hey, pull out your iPhone and just, you know, make that appointment. Talk to Sari. <laughs> exactly. Here she is. Sari, 
Make my appointment. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk to Sight and Sound. <laughs> right. I want that CEO of fun. <laughs> um, should they bring? Should they be weary of bringing a checkbook to the show? No, I don't think they should be weary of it or leery of it. Um, there are some vendors who do offer very special pricing if you book there. Okay. But before you leave the show, and before you actually write out that check, maybe ask a couple of the other vendors there. You know, I'm thinking of hiring so-and-so, and they've got a very good deal today, and I'm going to write them out a check. Usually the other vendors know each other, mm -hmm. and they know if somebody's been in business a long time, and they can kind of give you an on-the-spot referral. Yes, you can totally be comfortable with that company and go ahead and write that check. If you aren't getting that kind of feeling, don't be in a hurry. Do a little research after the show. Mm -hmm. You know, check mm -hmm. their references before you decide to, to spend the money. Absolutely. And take notes and follow up. Right. Talk to me a little bit. I mean, brides should be writing, like maybe bring a Sharpie with them because some people have glossy brochures and things like that. Grab a Sharpie and just yeah. write notes. I mean, because we're going to talk about the bag and how to organize the stuff in a minute like we talked about, but kind of explain why it's so important to take notes. Because you're not going to remember. If you, especially if you just talked to 150 people, you know, how are you going to remember them? It'll all get a little blurry later. Uh, so, yeah, pick up whatever piece they give you. And Sharpie, that's a great tip because some <laughs> things are glossy. Yeah. You can't just write on them. And I'm looking at a Sharpie yeah, right now, so definitely. I was inspired. <laughs> so take that Sharpie and just write, loved this guy, hated this guy, you know, <laughs> whatever, yeah. it, whatever your initial reaction is. I love the pink cake. I hated the yellow cake, you know, whatever yeah. it is you're remembering about them and make those little notes because later on you can organize those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's the, again, great information. Debbie Hansen, yeah. Bridal Spectacular, <laughs> BridalSpectacular.com. She's rocking it here. She's giving you all the great tips. So that's, that's awesome. Um, also, are you allowed, here's a great question. Are you allowed to take photos of a fashion show? As a bridal show producer, I have no problems at all uh, with the brides taking pictures of the fashion show. It's a great way to remember a particular dress. And with our, all of us with our iPhones out right now, mm -hmm. that would be a very hard thing to control if you didn't, somebody didn't like it. Uh, I would only say that sometimes vendors don't always want pictures taken of their booths what, for whatever reason. So mm -hmm. always ask when it's in front of somebody's booth uh, or display at their booth, go ahead and ask them, is it okay if I take a picture? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but the fashion show, no problem. It's a good way to remember that dress when you go back to the store. And I noticed, you know, taking a picture now, like you said, everything's mm -hmm. we're living in a modern world and everything is on our cell phones now. I really do even myself, you know, when I go to some place or if I see a design. A matter of fact, I was at an H&M store and I really liked the display of H&M in New York City. And I loved the disco balls and what was happening. And I took out my camera and I started taking pictures of it because I'm like, this is a kick butt display. And actually security came over and like uh i'm sorry you're not allowed to take pictures yeah obviously they weren't comfortable with that yeah and some vendors for whatever reasons might not be. yeah so that was, just ask yeah, yeah just ask absolutely absolutely so let's talk about the bag the, the, bag. the bag, the infamous bag, the bag we're referring to, ladies, as you've been listening, gentlemen, as you've been listening to our show, is now that you've attended the bridal show, all the stuff that you have in the bag. Debbie, I'm going to turn it over to you. What what do they do with the bag? I hope they don't take it home and just throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> because, Me too. <laughs> yeah, because they have just collected, you know, hundreds of pieces of information and hopefully with their little notes on them of the things they liked best and the things they didn't like. So I highly recommend as you take it home, maybe that night, maybe not if you're a little too tired, but the next day take and just dump it all out on your bed and start sorting by category. Mm -hmm. Photographers, DJs, cake, entertainment, flowers, all the different categories, separate them out. Uh, get yourself a, a loose leaf notebook mm -hmm. with pockets in it. Mm -hmm. Put your Sharpie and write the name on those and then separate them into those pockets. Mm -hmm. After you've done that part of it, then it may not even be the same day, but the next day, then start going through pocket by pocket. Now look at the notes you made on these different people. Start narrowing it down. If you need to make more research first, then make your research. But start narrowing down who you actually want to talk to, which ones did you make appointments with, and, and you know, investigate them further. And, and by that, I mean, it's so great now because, I mean, they can take the brochure, they can have their iPad or their laptop out, and they can just go right away, go on to that person's website. And right. Right. They can look at more details that they'll find out on the website for sure. Absolutely. I, I never recommend making a decision just from a website. You should definitely talk to the people. I agree. If you haven't met them at the bridal show, go meet the people, make I, appointments. 
I, I definitely, I definitely agree. What do you, what do you do when you're approached by someone outside the show, like a vendor or somebody who is hanging out outside of like, for example, outside of the bridal show, they're handing out brochures and stuff. Should you, that, that, as show producers, that's one of our most frustrating things, uh, you know, because we, we spend a lot of money marketing to bring the brides into the show. We spend a lot of time bringing in the best vendors for those brides. And then there's always the person who says, oh, I don't want to pay. I'll go stand on the sidewalk and hand out my information. Brides refuse it. I say simply refuse it. You don't know anything about that person. They haven't been willing to spend the marketing dollars to be inside to meet you. So I would say just refuse the information. You also have to be careful of the ones who buy a ticket and come into the show and then follow you around and try to give you information. So, yeah, you, you want to make sure that you're talking to people in booths, not somebody that tackles you in the sidewalk, you know, or, or in the aisles and says, oh, by the way, I have a cake business and here's my card. Right, right. Stick to the vendor, stick to the booths. It'll be very obvious that they're there legitimately and they're the ones you'll want to talk wow, to. Wow, amazing. I can't believe that people do that. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Wow. And having been in the bridal industry and producing the show, I'm, I'm, I'm just like floored. I'm like, really? People do this? Stuff. Wow. Every show. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and 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 yeah, so girls, definitely be aware of that. I mean, that's you know, you should say to the person who hands you his card, you know, it's like, so where let me go let's walk over and see your booth. They should also yes. let you know, of course. Yes. I mean, you should bring something like that to the attention of the bridal show producer. Right. And usually other vendors will do that. They'll yeah. let us know there's somebody handing things out in the but, aisle and we take care of it. Yeah. But brides too. Right. I mean, seriously, yes. the bride yeah. should know that too, because these right. vendors, you know, spend a lot of money to meet these girls and right. it's it's so important and the ones that have spent the money the, for the bride and, and every show is different but at our show in particular we've checked that they have licensing uh that they've got good record on the chamber of commerce the better business bureau all those things so we've already done a little bit of pre-research for the bride so that she knows she's dealing with qualified vendors wow Wow, that's good. That's great information as well, because you do want to make sure that the bridal show producer knows that these people are legitimate businesses right. and can, you know, are established in, in Las it, wherever you are. I'm saying Las Vegas because yeah. we're in Las Vegas, wedding capital of the world. <laughs> um, Debbie, is there anything else that, uh, that you feel we should touch on or mention in regards to, you know, for the girls, any pieces of advice that you want to give before we close it out? Well, make sure she sees the fashion show. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Uh, you're going to get to see all the latest trends in tuxedos, formal wear, and dresses. So, you know, make sure you carve out enough time to see that. Usually at some point, if you're in the show walking around talking to the vendors, you're going to hear the music start, and you're going to hear announcements that the show is getting ready to start. Go head on over to that fashion show and see it. And it'll also will give you a little bit of a break so that you can rest, you know, your feet for a little while, rest your mind for a little while, enjoy a show, and then go back and, and do some more shopping. Awesome. So and do you have, I know there's restrooms, of course. You're there oh, for a long yeah. time. And we all need to, but was, are there places where they can buy food and stuff like that? I mean, I know that there are vendors that some of the catering places will, you know, have you taste food, but do you have, are there usually restaurants or someplace to eat? Or well, grab speaking a snack? for shows nationally, I'd have to say I, in, in every show's case, I'm not sure. Okay. You know, in our show, yes, uh, we do have food available uh, through the concessions so that they can do that. And there's also bars, you know, so they can grab a nice. cocktail, you know, but that may not be the same in every show across the right. country. Um, but there's usually some little catering samples and there's cake samples and just different things from vendors who are, of course, their product is food, who will be handing out samples too for the brides to enjoy. That's awesome. All right, boys and girls. Well, that is uh, Debbie Hansen from Bridal Spectacular. Debbie, give out your information for any of brides that want to talk to you or even, you know, vendors that might want to speak to you. How do they reach you? Well, definitely, if you're planning any kind of a Las Vegas wedding, and of course, that <laughs> girls from all over the country come Absolutely. to Las Vegas, uh, you go to bridalspectacular.com and you can check out our website. And all the vendors who participate in our events are on that website also. So you'll get to check out the local vendors and uh, find out more about them. Um, you can also email us at orders at bridalspectacular.com and we'll be happy to take your emails and give suggestions on planning a wedding in Las Vegas. Awesome. And you tweet and Facebook? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see. Facebook fan page is uh, Bridal Spectacular Bridal Show. Okay. And Twitter is Vegas Bridal Show. Awesome. Great. All right, everybody. That is it. I am Jody Harris, CEO of Fun. I want to thank Debbie Hansen from Bridal Spectacular for being here and doing a fantastic job talking to you guys about how to attend a bridal show and what you should do. So we will see you next show. If you want to reach me, Jody Harris, remember I am on Twitter too. It's Jody Harris, J-O-D-I, Jody Harris. 
at tw on Twitter and uh, Sight and Sound on Facebook and SightNSound.com. And that's the letter N because we couldn't get the A and D. So it's the letter N. I will see you next time. Have a fantastic one. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.